Well, I have to say that I'm extremely grateful to each and every one of you who has subscribed to this channel to help get it to reach the 2.5k milestone. It's taken a while to reach this point, and to celebrate, I thought it would be good to actually do something with my community. After all, both previous subscriber specials I've made have just been me undergoing some sort of single player challenge, so haven't actually had anything to do with the people who allowed me to actually make such a video. I decided 25 races on SRB2K would be a good way to do this. After all, it's a really fun game, it's simple enough to set up a server and join it from a Discord group, and it has a ton of mod support so that people can ask me to tweak the races in pretty much any way they wanted. I figured, well, it will be a fun way to kill an hour and a half. I'll be pretty quick to edit, I'll be able to compensate for the interval between the last video and even being able to record for this one, and I'm sure it'll be a relaxing set of races. Hell, I might even win a game or two. I've got to say, you guys did not show any mercy to me, and after 25 races where I had my victory continuously robbed from me, I'm pretty ticked off. So please, watch as I and the rest of my lobby slowly descended to madness. What? as I realised the grave mistake that I had made. What? As I drove through a hellscape of my own design. This? This is going to be the Jackalman's Inferno. It took a while to actually get into the races. As it turns out, a lot more people were interested in joining the 25 races than they were interested in joining the server tests for it, and I had downloaded practically every SRB2K mod under the sun at their request so the server setup I was using initially was completely unable to cope with the presser. After uninstalling a few mods they were kicking up a fuss and waiting a couple of minutes for people to download several megabytes worth of mods. That's a lot more than it sounds for this game. Race 1 took place in Dark Fowl Garden, and acted more as an introduction to some of the themes and patterns that you should expect to see reoccur throughout future races. First and foremost is that traversing these courses is significantly harder when 9 players are on the track than it is when there are just 3 or 4, mostly because sunting into other players is far more effective than I remembered it being. Secondly, the winner of this race was one Ruby the Me, who claims that this event was their first time playing SRB2K in a while. Based off their performance in upcoming races, I, and by extension all of you, should take that claim with a pinch of salt. Race 2 took place on Hilltop, an entirely mediocre course that is chosen so unanimously by everyone I ever played this game with that I have to assume I am the sole inhabitant of some pocket universe where the course layout is far inferior. This course does not deserve this level of universal appraisal, is all I'm going to say. That being said, I had a slight advantage over the other races in these initial races in that I was the only one to know how to use the tricks mod I had installed which, on a course with several ramps to use them on, would make it permissible for you to assume that I'd be able to place well above everyone else who wasn't getting extra speed boosts every few seconds. You'd be wrong, but it would be justifiable. Instead, I placed 5th a second time, and then got knocked off screen by the racers who finished after me. The disrespect. The other important name you need to be acquainted with at this stage is this guy, Ali, who was unable to compete in that first race. I've already mentioned Ruby as a particularly dangerous member of the competition, but Ali was equally, if not even more, skilled than they were. I'll leave it at this, if you were to bet on a winner for any of the races played here, you'd be pretty well off if you were to just stick with Ruby and Ali. Northern District was the course for Race 3, and I decided to tell everyone how to use the tricks. I could never say I like generosity, after all. I did begin to regret doing so when I started seeing Omitau begin to fill up my screen though. I considered my drifting to have improved, look at those racing lines, but it failed to get me anywhere when any time I got anywhere, I'd be hit by an item and overtaken by half the lobby. Sounds like it could have been worse though, as some unfortunate fellow didn't appear to be having much luck with her item roulette if their ending rant was to be given much credence. For race 4 on Sand Valley, I decided I needed a weightier racer so that I could give as good as I got when it comes to being subbed around. Hence, racer 2 of 3, 
modern Sonic All-Star. With a heavier character, I hoped my experience of getting decimated by individual items could be soothed somewhat. It didn't really help, seeing as the only time I really got hit by another racist item was when I was mid-air over a death pit. Again, throwing around less isn't going to help in that particular scenario. Instead, it was likely luck in repeatedly getting the speed sneakers needed to skip past the slowest section of the course that got me up into a respectable third place, behind Lexo and Ali. Race 5 was the point that people realised that I was filming these races, so for those who left messages to viewers and the like, here they are. I got an early handicap by flubbing my starting boost, which actually left me in a worse position than outright burning out like in previous races, but ended up pretty well off by the end of this murder corridor, only to lose all of my speed right in front of a road that reduces your speed. Wide range of emotions in the first 45 seconds of a race, I'll give you that. I then had to contend with my TV monitor flashing on and off in the second lap, which you conveniently can't see in the recorded footage, but explains why I appeared to try and do a donut off the side of the course. Place 6 and then entered the race with my best imitation of a dive bomber straight into another contestant. Race 6 took place on Egg Zeppelin, and despite the fact that I was bouncing off the course walls like this was some sort of pinball machine, it didn't do that badly. I ended up looking into second place somehow, and from there was basically an exercise in trying to match what Ali was doing ahead of me. I couldn't really catch up, Ali just seemed to be baseline faster than me despite not possibly having a better speed stat, but I was settling into the fact that I could get a respectable second right up until I got hit right on the final corner and got overtaken by Ruby. God damn it. Didn't look like I was the only one struggling though, if the ending tat was anything to go by. Before race 7 begins, I feel like I need to tell the world about one of the other races' sandwiches. Lexo was telling us in the pre-race chat about how right before the races began, they had a delectable beef, brie and cranberry sandwich, and past that point it was pretty much all they ever talked about in the chat. So, seeing as they wouldn't stop going on about it, I feel it's my place to step in and knock that sandwich down a peg. It sounds crap. Brie and cranberry are a natural combination, but I have never heard of someone putting beef alongside them. Wash your mouth out and eat a better sandwich. I'm boring and sticking it exclusively to just ham or just cheese. But I will say that I used to like a combo of cheese and ketchup. Don't knock it until you try it. This race took place on Desert Palace, but it wasn't particularly interesting. I spent more time off-road than I did on the track, because it turns out using speed sneakers on a course with no shortcuts and no long straights, where the track is consistently extremely narrow, is a poor move. Did see someone get nuked despite seemingly not hitting anything. Seemed unfortunate. Ended up placing ninth. I don't really want to talk about Race 8, taking place on Poyo Poyo Gardens. I was pretty much dominant through the entire first lap, with a massive lead owing to my, naturally, flawless racing line, Drift King. Unfortunately, a self-propelled bomb at the start of lap 2 knocked me down to a still workable third. From there, though, a cavalcade of mistakes and bumps, especially from one racer who was really insistent with trying to get past me, take the hint, geez, knocked me all the way down to 10th, and while I did crawl my way back up somewhat, I never got anywhere close to reclaiming my pole position. Hell yeah! Best course, best soundtrack, top tier SRB2K content, with most everyone voting the same, there's no way that it can... God damn it! Race 9 unfortunately took place on Misty Maze, and despite a flubbed start, I didn't have a terrible opening. Once I got into the water though, I was unaware of the existence of spikes lying this side of the track, and ended up dropping, or I believe the first time, all of the way into 11th. And then, to top it all off, I somehow got crushed in 11th. Perfect. And you know what? Despite reaching such a low placement, despite being surrounded by Armitau who wouldn't set up, despite the inhospitable course design, 
I still managed to crawl back up to second place. That's the American dream. That's proof that no matter what life throws you away, you can build yourself up to be better. It's proof that... I don't want to talk about it. Right, by race 10 I'm beginning to lose my patience. I hung on, but some of the other races couldn't cut it. And this was the point that the first races began to leave the server. Rest in peace, Luigi Bud. Pixar City did not help my waning sanity, mind you. Whether that be the fact I immediately careened into a pit off of the first corner, or the ramp that threw me into another pit, or the supposed shortcut ramp that didn't actually launch you far enough to reach the track, and so deposited you into a pit. Lots of pits, and if it wasn't a pit, I was going off-road or hitting an Eggman item in second place. Devastating. Ninth was all I could muster by the time all of that had come and gone, and it's safe to say that the overall rankings have really begun to segment into three distinct groups. Yeah, yeah indeed. Race 11 took place on Daytona Speedway. Of course, I've already professed my love for Daytona, let's go away, Daytona. Now that was just cruel, robbing me of my chance to get a full drift around the best spiral for one in the entire game. The second lap saw me slip further and further back in the ranking, before a blunder at the start of the third lap meant I came ringed deep into the off-road right at the back of the pack, only to be further inconvenienced by a mine that had been thrown back there. Be honest with yourselves, I was never going to close a gap this large with half a lap remaining, and therefore had to accept my first and last place finis. My poor performance has even begun to be reflected on my placement in the overall rankings, so I needed to try and pull this back. Race 12 took place on Mega Block Castle, and opened with an important question. Would Wario run over a child? I answered in the affirmative, as did everyone else who took the time to consider the query. I would say that I locked in for this race in an attempt to claw back some dignity after the, the disastrous race 11, and I did, but it only netted me a fifth. Ran headfirst into one too many Zack in the boxes, and I also really began to question whether the trick systems are really helping me. Looking back, I probably should have experimented more with item, seeing as that could feasibly give you speed sneakers whenever you needed. But what's done is done, I just need to remember it for next time. It was at this point that I decided I needed to learn from what, or rather, who, is working, so I looked at what Ali was doing and copied that. I felt it would be slightly too obvious if I was to jump in as a second Windows PC, so settled for a low quality JPEG of Octane, then got ready for race 13. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but Ali may not have agreed, seeing as he left immediately after I did this. Octane seemed to build up drift faster than Sonic All started, which helped immensely on the tight corners of this track, to the point that I managed to get hold of first for a little while. Indeed, I'd say I could have kept it up if a racer named Super didn't come out of nowhere and blast me with a lightning shield. Combine that with a swarm of racers that were following them intensely, and I'll say that the fifth I was left with is the second time my rightful first place was robbed from me. Ignore that 10 second gap. You may have noticed that throughout this event, I've almost exclusively stuck to selecting random to nominate my track for me. This is because I enjoy the feeling of not knowing what's coming, but every so often you have to contend with the fact that the randomizer will throw out a real stinker. In this case, Red Barrards. The first half of this track is fine, and occasionally a little harsh with the corners, for it pray for the innocent soul who bits us about at the second half feels really slow, before only later realising that second has taken place in a conveyor going in the opposite direction. Otherwise, race 14 was quite boring, as seeing as I barely even saw anyone else and therefore played this stage pretty much exactly as I would in a single player lobby. Fourth isn't that bad of a placement, until you realise that the lobby has practically halved in number. And at that point, it becomes a bit more damning.
Race 15 started with me getting cocky with writing out a long-winded message and missing my cue to get a starting speed boost. That's pretty much the most interesting thing that happened in the entirety of Blue Mountain Zone, as it turns out to being in the frosty centre of the group where you're too far ahead of the people behind you for them to do anything, but too far behind the people in front to ever catch up, means you really don't do or experience anything interesting. It's difficult to follow your race lines when the ice causes you to slip and slide. Deadweight race, let's move on. Race 16 took place on Midnight Channel, a track I will always select if it comes up purely and entirely because it has the best music in all of SRB2K. No surprise when it's the Persona theme track in this game. I haven't actually played any of the Persona games, but I can say that their art direction and music is the best in the business. In other words, I'm the archetypal Persona fan. At the end of the first lap, I got an Eggman crate, exploded and somehow managed to come out of the consuming confuffle in first, which was a fun subversion of the usual exceptions of my incoming fall from grace that usually comes out of that situation. I couldn't keep it up after getting hit by a missile, with the missile I sent in return just smashing into a wall, but I can take solace in fact this was probably the closest race yet, and I still got third. Race 17 took place in Green Hell, to which I can only say, really? Are the devs so creatively bankrupt that they put Green Hill in their game? Disgraceful. Sega, don't hire this man. Um, other than that, it was a pretty nothing race. I managed to hit a racer with a missile, only to get hit with another missile at the exact same spot in the span of about a second, and took a full face sitting a bomb straight into my car to lap later. But unless you enjoy seeing my digital avatars go through the wars, there wasn't much to see here. All you need to know is that by this point, I had accepted not being able to catch up with the top three. But I found a rival by the name of Cosmic. We both had a very similar overall scores at this point, and all of the future changes in the overall rankings will basically be just us alternating between 4th and 5th. Race 18, on Aurora Atoll, was probably the most transparently I had a victory robbed from me. I was dominant for two full laps, sitting in a pretty much uncontested first place with nothing to worry about. I even got hit by a self-propelled bomb and all it managed to do was cut down the gap, which I managed to open back up to a certain extent. It was going great, right until the end of lap 2, where Ruby came out of nowhere with a lightning shield and took me out. Why does this keep happening to me? To really rub it in my face, I get a self-propelled bomb myself, which disappears for half the final lap, and it's only right at the very end of the track that I see that it is not only failed to catch up to Ruby, but I catch up right in time to see them whip out another lightning shield right before they hit a corner which would have been too tight for them to have continued outrunning the bomb. I have no words other than that, I have to say that I am absolutely pissed off about our gone damn near 20 races and haven't got a single win. Statistically, I should have at least one by this point. Race 19 took place on Diamond Square, and I have to say that the weather was really matching up my mood at this time. Another thing that reflected how I was feeling included randomly blowing up at the start of the second lap, which was really helpful. I kept up a good pace throughout most of the race, with a pretty solid second, only for a missile to strike as I dropped from a ramp to allow two thirds of the lobby to get past me. I nearly managed to sneak in a third place finish, but do you know who sped past me at the literal last second? Can you guess? Did you guess it was goddamn Ruby? I'm trying really hard to stop the expletives throwing out, I hope you understand that. Race 20 was on Monkey Island, which I have to say, looked quite different to the Monkey Island that I know. I've got to say that this really wasn't my greatest race, even so to me can't say that I was robbed on this when I spent most of my third lap pinballing off walls into the pits lining the track. I got triple speed sneakers which I used to get up into first by exploiting the grassy flats lining most corners, and then later got my own second place lining sealed. Couldn't use it to approximate the earlier injustices against me though, as I've sacrificed it to avoid getting hit by a missile. 
Same about this second missile immediately afterwards, though. Couldn't do anything about that. Yeah, I bet you can't, Ruby. We're most definitely in the endgame of this tournament, although I don't think the top spot is really in contention anymore. The other racers clearly wanted to do a little bit of gambling at this point, so race 21 took place from Casino Resort. Ruby was the ultimate winner, to no one's surprise, but I'll say that I really managed to turn my fortunes around throughout this race. I started out being sent to the back of the pack after getting hit by item after item in quick succession, but managed to drag myself into second place. Outside of being able to navigate the course without crashing too much, very little of that was to do with what I did, and was more just everyone else around me careening off the track. But is that not most representative of the spirit of the casino? You win some, you lose some. Or in my case, you lose some, and can consider yourself a runner-up in some others. When I saw that one of the possible tracks for War Race 22 was Yukai Mountain, I knew my choice was made. I love me some Yokai Watts, and while this is disappointingly not that series, it's Toho or something I'm not acquainted with that franchise, it's close enough for me. It was a pretty cool track regardless, and I'm not completely convinced there were no Yokai Watts Yokai here either. In that series, Yokai are invisible spirits who mildly inconvenience others and I did magically spin out at one point for reasons I can't understand. Like, seriously, nothing hit me and there's nothing on the course in front of me. Why else did this happen? Additionally, further evidence of yokai activity includes just how disappointed I was when I ended up only getting second. The position marker thing bugged out to the final corner and told me I was in second place despite really being in third. So when I managed to bump Ruby out of the way and pass them, only to still be in second, was pretty disappointing. At least I knocked them down to fourth, as a very delayed act of revenge for getting screwed over in previous races, so take that. Race 23 was on Vanilla Hotel, and nothing really happened. There were no last second dramas, at least on my end, no getting screwed over out of nowhere, just a typical race. I made a habit of sabotaging myself, whether that's clipping myself on door frames and losing all my speed and drift meter, or throwing bombs only to immediately drive into them, but it was never anything else to do with what other people did. Which makes me even more mad. Who the hell do I blame for going fifth now? I can't blame myself, I'm too good to possibly need to work on my own skills, so someone else needs to take the fall. Was that Michael Rosen? By race 24, my baseline levels of annoyance had reached critical mass, so when I saw the opportunity to pick Monochrome Void, I took it. Monochrome Void is far and away the worst track in SRP2K, whether it be the aesthetics making it impossible to tell what's happening, the level design being pretty crap, or the god awful music. So, I'm glad it ended up winning the roulette, because now everyone else can be annoyed by this whole thing like I am. By this point, I think I had just accepted that I wasn't going to be getting anywhere, so while everyone else was battling it out, I just drifted through. Invincibility causing me to float? Okay. Speed booster throwing me off the course? Okay. Bumping someone at the finish line, inadvertently ensuring that they got second place over me? Okay. Hope you appreciated it, the doys. And my hopes came true. Everyone did have a miserable time on this course as can be seen by how they all immediately told me to kill myself as soon as they finished the race. I'm much happier now that everyone else is just a little bit more miserable going into that final race. Race 25. The big climax. What all of this has led towards. There wouldn't be any surprise about who would win at this stage, but I figured to celebrate we should finish the Deckmatch nightclub. Every selectable track all of which we hadn't yet raced on, got two votes, which of course means the one random option selected would win and we'd have a repeat race on Pixar City. I didn't really mind, more than anything I'm just surprised it took until literally the last possible moment for a track to repeat, seeing as I played some tracks three or four times in half an hour during the server tests. Anyway, wouldn't it really be something if after 24 races of heartbreaking close calls, I'd finally get my first win in the final race. For entirely unrelated purposes, I'm just going to let this race play out in full.
told you were there, there were no relation to my previous statements. Yeah, so I hope you're as disappointed by that anticlimax as I was. I probably would have been more aggressive in the final corners to try and knock Super down a few places if I remembered Pixar City was a two-lap course. But you can't change the past. So, well done to Super for getting that last win, and to Ruby the Me for winning the whole thing. Now, I have to clarify that any statements of aggression or disdain aimed towards any of the other racers in this tournament, and their innately infuriating skill of being better than me in a video game, is nothing but a little bit of fun. I don't actually bear any ill will towards them for winning against me. Indeed, I even gave Ruby the Me a custom Discord role to commemorate their victory. So, make of that what you will. I am a calm and reasonable person, and lack the emotional capability to express anything at a game beyond mild indignation. So, I have to say thank you to everyone who participated in these races, and made it such a memorable and, contrary to some of my reactions, fun event. And indeed, thank you to each and every one of you who subscribed and made it possible for me to make this video in the first place. This tournament and its earlier server tests really showed me just how fun SRB2K is after frankly ignoring it for the longest time. So I might think about expanding my content portfolio and doing some videos on this as well. And hey, Ring Racers is out now. I'll probably do my next subscriber milestone at 5,000 subs, which should give everyone interest in participating that just enough time to get through that game's tutorial. Once again, thank you to everyone who's watching these videos and subscribing to the channel. I really do enjoy making them and I hope I can continue on doing so long into the future. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video, and ciao.